Hi Year 11, this video is designed to go over the structure of the skeleton, bones and cartilage and give you more of an insight into what actually bone is made of and how it does some of the things that it does. So when we think about the skeleton generally, you should divide the skeleton into two parts. The axial skeleton, which is made of the skull and has a vertebral column, your spine, and has a rib cage. And that forms the main axis of the body, so the main point at which um, various other limbs will be attached, and um, basically it's a it's it's a major support in terms of hanging everything off it. Second part of the skeleton is the appendicular skeleton, and that's the name given to the remaining parts: the shoulder, the girdle, um, the pelvic girdle, um, arms, legs, your limbs. When we talk about bones, bones are hard living tissue. Um, they're formed from bone cells. And there's a matrix um, that is produced around those bone cells, and it's strengthened by calcium and phosphorus, those are two minerals. Um, bone, like other tissues, is alive, so please don't think of it as just a hard piece of rock. It's absolutely not. Um, it's supplied with blood vessels, it has blood vessels running through it, it has nerves running through it. Um, when you break a bone, it's painful because the nerves in a bone make sure you know that there's a problem that's feeding back to you that something's occurred there. And if a bone is damaged, there'll be blood and those nerve impulses will be kicking off and then you know that there is an issue there. But if bone is broken, it can repair itself because at the core of it, bones are alive. Now, when we think of what a bone is actually made of, there are broadly four parts to the structure of a bone. You've got your hard bone. When your hard bone is um, a bone that's made of hard, dense, strong, compact bone, actually tough stuff there. You've then got your spongy bone, and um, the hard bone is around this spongy stuff. The spongy bone gets that name not because it's soft, but because it's got spaces um, like air spaces in it, like a sponge does. And those spaces are filled with fat or with marrow, and it's, it's not as heavy or as strong as that hard bone stuff, which is the difference between the two of them. Bones have a central cavity, so it's particularly evident in a long bone, um, and that's a shaft down the centre, and that is usually filled with marrow, and that cavity uh, doesn't have anything in it, um, that will make the bone lighter. And then lastly, you've got yourself a periosteum, and that's a tough, thin membrane that covers the very outside of a bone, and it has an absolute network of nerves within it. Now, when we talk about bone tissue, um, we need to be mindful of the cells that make up bone, bone cells. And those bone cells are called osteocytes. They make up bone tissue. They're arranged in circles around a central tube in the bone called the Habersian Canal. And that will contain blood vessels and nerves. Those cells are connected by very small channels, and that makes a web. Uh, the space between the cells connecting all those channels is what we call a hard matrix. And that matrix is made of collagen fibers. And collagen is a very strong protein. So protein that you take in your diet, um, one of the things that it will be turned into is collagen. And as I said, collagen is strong and that will help give bone strength. Now that collagen is embedded um, with a substance that contains calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. And those are mineral sources um, that help make the bone very, very hard. So the osteocytes, those bone cells, are responsible for depositing those calcium compounds in the matrix. That process is called deposition. And it occurs during periods of bone growth. So um, a small child or a teenager um, going through adolescence will be doing more depositation, um, as would someone who has just broken a bone or is in the process of having it repaired because of an injury. Um, it's important that calcium rich foods are in your diet and that leads to strong, healthy bones. So that includes things like uh, milk, cheese, yogurt, fish, sardines, figs, muesli, broccoli, spinach. If you don't have calcium in your diet, then the deposition of calcium um, means that all the deposits that you end up getting into calcium will be absorbed back from the bone. And the consequence of that is that that will weaken the bone. OK, so another factor you need to bear in mind is the chemical vitamin D, and it has a role in aiding that absorption of uh, calcium and the formation of all of that matrix.